Hey everyone, welcome and good morning, Amazonet's Raw Daily. Today is Wednesday, the 23rd of August, and we're going to talk about some search query performance report stuff today. Uh, I want to give you um, a really quick episode today, why I really love to work with search query performance report data. I use that a lot lately meaning in the uh, past six months, seven months, eight months of this year, I would say. And uh, it really helps uh, driving good decision-making for me. That's why I want to talk about with you on uh, on that topic. So search query performance data is, for those of you who listen to this podcast for the first time, is a report, a reporting data, which you can find in the brand analytics section they had recently restructured kind of this section where um, you would now go into brand analytics and then you have two different uh, main buckets one is called search analytics and the other one is the customer behavior analytics and you want to go into search analytics and then search query performance report this allows you to then download um, the search query performance report either for the whole brand or for individual ASINs and you can download this on a weekly basis or monthly or even quarterly basis. And I really like to download the weekly uh, the weekly versions because they give uh, you over time, I think, the best insights into what terms are moving uh, up and down in the organic rankings, I would say. It's not giving you directly organic rankings in that way. But you're getting your brand impression share, you get your brand click share, you get your brand purchase share. And this gives you kind of a good indication. Are you uh, doing well with this keyword or are you not doing well with this keyword? If you download the ASIN view, I think it gives you the top 100 search queries for uh, that given time period what Amazon thinks is top in terms of relevancy. If you download the brand view, it gives you the top 1,000 search queries for your brand. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, this is um, there, there's a few things you have to uh, really know about this report. This is not 100% of all the data available. This only covers sponsored products and some organic it doesn't cover a certain widget. It doesn't cover traffic from external and it doesn't cover traffic directly on the PDP. It doesn't cover traffic from a uh, sponsored brand, sponsored display. So this is only a fraction of the actual data. So when you would look at all the purchases coming in this report and you compare it to all your purchases you had in a certain period on your brand or your ASIN, you will find that this is maybe 20% um, of what you actually had. So this gives you not the full picture, but that's not super important to get the full picture here because, because as I laid out in some earlier episodes, how I feel about data is you data should give you a direction. It should give you a trend and it should give you a meaningful um, insight into driving some actions for you. And I think this is what it does. Because it covers the main search and result page view, I would say. Maybe not. it's not 100% the same data, but I think it gives you kind of a good direction. So we can clearly see if we push certain terms on PPC that our impression and click and hopefully also purchase share is going up in the next week. Um, the only downside to this is it's really delayed the data is one week delayed so usually on mondays you get the newest data for the previous week so you cannot really act within real time so you can download the stuff on monday to see what happened in the week prior and then you can adjust your strategy for the current week but then you have to wait another week to see how this actually turned out um, and turn, did it turn out to your favor or not when you download the data 
um, you have a couple of options when you download this in the weekly view. You can download either the simple view or you can download a comprehensive view, which gives you a bit more um, rows. So it can go up to, I think, 2,500 or something like that. So you get more search queries. Uh, the comprehensive view, I think, is only available on brand level and not on ASIN level. Let me quickly check that you for um, for you. Um, MAQ. Yep. Yeah. In the ASIN view, you only have the simple view, but on the brand level view, you can download also a comprehensive view and on the monthly view you can uh, download a few other a few other things which i didn't find too interesting um it gives you amazon choice batch data and search funnel outliers data so it gives you a couple of recommendations on keywords where things you can either invest more or uh, or not um but let's go to the simple view when you download the stuff you'll you'll be able to create um, pivot tables or on that and you can look into your individual search queries over time and how uh, your brand impressions on that search term, your brand clicks and your purchases are doing and your share. Um, note, Amazon has not made the data in a way that you can easily um, view period over periods so you cannot easily view week or week or month over month because amazon has yeah you you, you download basically the the um yeah you, you download this one period and then you get the brand share or uh, asin share for clicks impressions and purchases um for that time period if you have multiple weeks and you have multiple queries and you want to do a pivot table, you have to obviously calculate your shares again by dividing your brand clicks um, by the total clicks in that given period. So you have to create calculated fields for the shares. Otherwise, you'll get some wrong outputs if you look at aggregated data. If you look at individual search query data, um, obviously you get the right answers. Um, and what I what I really like to do here with this data is take take week by week look at how search query volume is doing, and what I learned is this is not the total actual search query volume of that keyword in every, any given time period. It's really also just a fraction because. It clearly shows if I push on PPC heavy for a certain term, the search query volume, which I was thinking is the amount of people searching for keyword, is actually going up as well. And if you have weeks where it's super stable and then in one week I push PPC and then my search query volume is also going up in that week, then it indicates there is some kind of correlation and connection between my actual PPC spend and the data I see in uh, this report as well. So you can you can take it as an indication uh, um, to kind of compare low volume search queries uh, versus high volume search queries. It also gives you the total impression count, which is obviously um, all the impressions generated from um, different products on that query. And then you get your impressions, clicks, and purchases, and so on and so forth. And your purchase share gives you a really good indication if you're owning a market, if you're growing in the market, or if you're not growing in the market. And for branded terms, you want to have a purchase share, hopefully higher than 80 or 90 or even 95%. If your purchase share on your branded terms is low, then this is an indication to do something with your branded terms and to make sure that you show up. Uh, because most likely, if your purchase share on branded terms is lower than 80%, then obviously, uh, then most likely your, your click and impression share will also be lower than uh, this. And the same the same methodology 
can go into non-branded terms as well. So you can check your purchase share on any given important keyword from you and you want to aim for yeah, a certain certain amount of purchases, let's say 5% um, or 10%. And what you can also do, you cannot do that in the downloaded report, but you can do that in the inter interface. You can click on the individual queries in the ASIN view, and this will give you a um breakdown into what ASINs. So this is only available in the ASIN view, but if you, I don't know, uh, check your main ASIN, your hero ASIN, and on you check it on a weekly base or a monthly base, uh, then in the interface, you can select the individual search queries and click on them. And then this opens up a new report, which shows you the search query details. And this shows you what 10 products have been uh, having the highest impressions and impression share and click share on that term in that period. And for branded terms, obviously you want to be um, the one with the highest impression and click share. But eventually for generic terms, this is uh, other competitors. And then you can see how high is the impression share of the top 10 products visible for this term and this would be your goal to uh, achieve highest top 10 or even top five um, of those and then you can can check out so i selected the keyword here and for example on that keyword the highest the lowest impression share of the top 10 had two percent impression share and the highest asin had eight percent impression share and the top five had at least 4% of impression share and uh, up. So if I want to be in the top five or top four, you know, this would be uh, kind of the correlation to the organic rankings, then, um, yeah, I need to push my PVC. I need to push my keywords in a way that I'm uh, getting the impression share above 4%. And then you will also see what kind of click share you can expect from that. And with that, you can see how much clicks you can expect and uh, purchases and so on and so forth. So it's a very nice report, which gives you a lot of, lots of insights. Um, obviously, if you download the data, you can enhance it by tagging terms as branded or non-branded, um, doing a little formulas in the input sheets, uh, adding a few columns, and then you can do lots of cool analysis over time and uh, monitor your search query performance report. And last note, and then we close it for today, is that we heard the rumors, I heard the rumors that search query performance report API should be coming end of this year, Q3, Q4, uh, which would allow this data to be automatically pulled into some databases and this would be super helpful because currently you kind of have to download this manually or scrape it or whatever. So there's um, not an automated way to get this data pushed or pulled into a database, which makes it a little hard to digest, especially if you have lots of ASINs, lots of brands to handle. Um, yeah, so very excited for this development. I think this is a very, very powerful source of data and you all should be working with that. And with that, have a wonderful Wednesday. Take care. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.